Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2.30 to 3 o'clock p.m. session of the 2020 Open Simulator Community Conference. In this session, we are happy to introduce a presentation called How to Submit Bugs to the Open Simulator Project. Our speaker is Kayaker Magic. Kayaker Magic has been a reporter for OpenSim for many years and submitted many bug reports. He gave a presentation at OSCC several years ago about the sad, sorry state of weapons development in OpenSim to bring attention to some of the bugs. Things are much better now. He is a prolific writer of LSL scripts for OpenSim, and you may have seen some of his work all over the metaverse and possibly all over the stage. Please check out the website found at conference.opensimulator.org for speaker bios, details of sessions, and the full schedule of events. The session is being live streamed and recorded, so if you have questions or comments during the session, you may send tweets to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag OSCC20. Welcome, everyone. Let's begin the session. Hi, everybody. As you all probably know, Open Simulator is an open source project written and maintained by volunteers. But the people writing the code cannot test every facet of this huge project. Uh, they depend on reporters to try everything out, verify when things are fixed, and report new issues. Any of us can be reporters, but to be effective, there are procedures you should go through. Don't just whine, something doesn't work, fix it. <clears throat> you should go through several steps to submit a good bug report. And that's not easy, which I'll probably say several times. It's hard to do a good job, and so I'll go through the steps with some more stories of experiences I've had reporting bugs in OpenSim. And I hope to encourage more people to help improve OpenSim by reporting bugs, and I hope to show you how to improve the quality of your bugs. Uh, of, not of your bugs, of your bug reports. <clears throat> So here's the outline of the of the process. The uh, when you notice something is wrong, you should try and learn uh, as much as you can about it to gather information. There's a process called submitting a mantis, and uh, later uh, I rec highly recommend that people who report bugs go to the OpenSim Open House Developers Meetings, and uh, when your bugs are hopefully and quickly fixed, you can test your bugs and report back to the developers to tell them what a great job they're doing. And uh, and then you can mark your Manus uh, uh, bug reports as having been fixed. The first step in gathering information is, uh, is it's probably best to check and see if somebody else has already reported a problem that you've seen. So here's the, uh, the URL, opensimulator.org slash mantis that is the, the hub of, uh, of, of tracking and checking bugs in OpenSim. There's a button on that called View Issues, and it has a lot of options for narrowing your search, but the most important thing is a, a, a text uh, box, search box where you can type something like slow mesh or, uh, or hypergrid failure or, or the name of an LSL function like LL get time. And it will tell you if other people have reported bugs about this, and you can read those. And uh, if uh, if you have uh, information to add to a bug report that's already there, then uh, there's a uh, there's a box for adding a note to the end of uh, of an existing bug report. So, what other information do you need to 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 collect? <clears throat> Uh, the, the most important thing is probably to uh, try and find a way to get problems to happen on demand. And this is, this is the hardest thing about submitting bugs. And if you can get a bug to happen uh, on demand, this is absolutely fantastic because then the developers can make it happen and they can, are able to fix it much faster. If, uh, if you are a, uh, a scripter like me, it's, uh, it's, a bit easier to find ways to get bugs to repeat. For example, uh, you may say, every other time I go to a particular region, uh, mesh doesn't res. Well, every other time is, is great. Often problems are uh, don't happen every time, don't even happen very often. But a script can do something a thousand times in a second and exercise the system very, very hard and, and uh, get problems to happen. 
Although uh, I, I would discourage you to submit a 2000 line free vehicle script that you got from SL with a note that says it doesn't work. The developers are not going to debug your bad script for you. I like to say that a lot of the free scripts that you get from OpenSim are worth a lot less than you paid for them. Uh, an example of, uh, of a script that, uh, that I uh, had noticed a problem in a function called uh, LLListen in the, uh, in the library, and um, except it didn't hardly happen uh, very often. Once it happened, it, it, was, uh, it was very repeatable, but as soon as you restarted your region, it, uh, it would start, uh, it would, if things would start working correct again. And, uh, and so I was at a loss for a long time as to, uh, to how to fix this problem with listen until I tried to write this, uh, this uh, toy here, which is a device for painting crims in the air. And it turns out that every every segment of the line in this this uh, this uh, thing I'm drawing in the air is um, uh, requires that each segment uh, create a, a a a listen channel and then talk to the to the main uh, HUD that I'm wearing, and then after a while, listen would would stop working. And so I was able to, to pare this down and down and down until I had a very small script that ran, uh, that called LL Listen a thousand times. And on the 600th call, it started to fail. And then when I submitted a bug with that script saying, here's how to get it to fail every single time, within 24 hours, UBIT, and thank you, UBIT, was able to fix that bug. And, uh, and then this, this uh, uh, toy here that draws in the air, I had had this lying around for a while and I wasn't able to sell it on the Kitely market because it always crashed whenever people tried to use it. Uh, now I'm able to, uh, to sell this on the Kitely market and it works in any, any region that has upgraded, uh, fortunately, to uh, OpenSim 0.9.1. When you have gathered information about your uh, about your bug, you need to fill out a mantis form. Well, here are the steps of filling out a mantis form. But let let me try and show you uh, what the mantis form looks like. You probably won't be able to read that, uh, but this is what it looks like. And I'll go go through the uh, uh, the, the, the the parts of it. Uh, you get to this page from that main page that I gave you the link to earlier by clicking on the report issue button. By the way, uh, you probably will need to create an account in the Mantis. And once you have created an account there, then congratulations, you are a, uh, a reporter now. So there's a category box where you, you tell, uh, there's a drop down that you get to choose whether this is an issue with the scripts, whether it's an issue with the physics engine, whether it's an issue with the OpenSIM core or... Uh, and a few other issues that have to do with uh, with the, the main server code that uh, that most of us don't deal with, but there are a lot of uh, choices there for that box. There's a button for reportability, a reproducibility, and hopefully that's always. And there are I'd like to say that this form is obvious and you just fill in the boxes, but there are some that have always annoyed me. For example, there's a box that says OS. Does that stand for open sim or actually no, it turns out that stands for operating system. And there are a couple boxes like for your, your, your Git uh, uh, number. And well, what is a Git number? How do I get a Git? And most of us, uh, uh, at least I didn't used to know what a, a Git uh, number was. And so I couldn't fill in that box. But for the most part, you can uh, skip the, uh, the confusing boxes. There is a line to fill out saying what is uh, what is a one line short description of your problem like uh, mesh load slow uh, in uh, region uh, LBSA Plaza. That would be a, uh, uh, a short description and then a longer description uh, uh, saying uh, what the problem is and uh, there's a separate box for how do you reproduce it which I keep saying is the most important box. And then there's an additional information box. And what I usually stick in that box is a script. And of course, down at the bottom of this form somewhere, there's a submit button. And then you have submitted a, a bug to uh, help the uh, developers uh, figure out what's going on in, uh, in OpenSim. 
<laughs> it's a huge project, and uh, and you you might say, well, why don't the debug the developers find the bugs for us? And well, the debuggers are busy fixing things, and it's a huge project, and and they are cloud sourcing the the search for bugs by by asking the rest of us to help out. So you can be a big help by uh, doing a concise job of reporting the things that you see go wrong. So one of the important things that I think you should do after submitting a, a bug report is to start showing up at the open house uh, uh, developers uh, uh, meeting, which uh, takes place in OS Grid in a uh, region called the uh, uh, um, called Dev Outreach. And Dev Outreach uh, has a couple of wonderful features. It is a sandbox, so you can actually test uh, your your bugs uh, there, and it is also uh, rebuilt automatically uh, most evenings. And so after a bug has been fixed, you can go to Dev Outreach and and test your bug again to make sure that, that your bug has been fixed. And of course, you can talk to the developers there. And so I like to, uh, when a bug hasn't been fixed yet, I like to go to the developers meeting and ask them every week, uh, have you fixed my bug yet? Have you fixed my bug yet? And eventually they get so annoyed that they fix their uh, my bugs just to make me shut up. And actually sometimes the, uh, the developers, now the developers are supposed to get uh, uh, a, an email whenever something is changed in the, uh, in the, the, the Mantis system. But uh, sometimes they they miss those. And for example, uh, I was showing up at dev meetings every uh, uh, um, every week. And there's one developer, Robert Adams, who I've seen around here today. He may be listening to me right now. And uh, Robert Adams uh, was uh, the developer responsible for the uh, the bullet sim uh, physics engine. And I found a couple of problems with the bullet sim. Uh, engine and I submitted them as Mantis I, uh, which is uh, I don't know exactly what the the plural of Mantis is supposed to be, but Mantis I is fun. So uh, Robert Adams showed up one day at one of these meetings and I said, "Oh, Robert, I haven't seen you in a while. How are you doing? Uh, have you looked at my my three mantises about bullet sim?" And he said, "What?" He said he, he hadn't noticed them. He didn't know they were there. And and during the meeting, he went and he read them and he said, "Oh my God, you're right. That is an interesting problem." And within several weeks, he'd fixed them. So showing up at the dev meetings, uh, even when you're not trying to annoy them, uh, is uh, is a good thing to do to uh, uh, to to make sure that they are aware of. Sometimes that they'll be aware of your problems and they they won't have time to work on them or they won't want to. And if you're signed up for the uh, the uh, dev uh, uh, developers uh, emails, you'll get emails whenever your Mantis is updated. So you might see uh, the, the, the de developers adding a note to your bug saying, this isn't a bug, this is a feature. Uh, something that I meant, forgot to mention earlier is that uh, when you report, before you report a bug, some of the, one of the pieces of information you might want to gather is, uh, is to try running it on Second Life Try running it on uh, on an older version of OpenSim. Uh, uh, Kitely was on OpenSim 0.8 uh, for a long time, uh, and it was it was often helpful to t try your bug on Kitely or or some other 0.8 uh, region. Uh, and you might find several of those on the uh, OS Grid. Uh, there's a lot of dark, dusty corners to OS Grid that have old versions of uh, OpenSim on it. But I would try my bug on Kitely. Try my bug on uh, on the latest version, and if it worked on Kitely and it didn't work in 0 0.9, then ho, 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 it was a new bug they had introduced, and that was valuable information. And if the bug was there in both of them, it meant that the bug had been around for a long time, and that was also useful information. And uh, and and so uh, uh, finally, when bugs are fixed, it's uh, the, not the responsibility of the developers to follow around behind you and close your mantises. So if you are paying attention and going to the dev meetings and testing your bug, then you can go to the mantis page and uh, and mark your bug as fixed. Uh, one thing that I did to, uh, to try and get bugs fixed was uh, in 2005, I gave a talk that I, I joked was it designed to embarrass 
the developers into fixing some bugs. That uh, you heard that at the beginning, the the sad, sorry state of weapons development. And as a result of that uh, of that talk, the developers did in fact uh, fix a bunch of bugs uh, in in weapons and. So I was thinking it might be fun to go postal and stand up here in front of the audience and uh, and shoot at them with a weapon, but uh, that would not go over well. So what I have here is is it's sort of a weapon. It's based on my snowball tosser. Uh oh, that is not the right. Uh... Uh, this was was actually developed a couple of years ago. I had. The idea of doing a a, a performance uh, here on uh, on the stage of uh, giving the audience a a a, uh, a a a toy that that threw tomatoes, so you could throw a tomato at somebody in the audience, or the audience could throw tomatoes at me if I said um too many times, and uh, and then uh, uh, that would tell me that they didn't like my talk. And I and then I have another uh, similar device that instead of throwing tomatoes, it throws roses. So if you if you liked my talk, then you would throw roses at me. And um, and this is the uh, uh, the rose tosser. Uh oh, that's not the rose tosser. So it would uh, it would throw roses like this. Oops, I missed. And then uh, the audience could throw roses at people. I'm not there. They are now. I see the roses. And um, uh, to indicate that they liked the speaker. So that that unfortunately didn't work because uh, the um, uh, the uh, audience isn't allowed to run scripts. So uh, getting back to things you can do about OpenSim, uh, one of the things you can do is you can install your own version, development version of OpenSim. Like I will go and, uh, and recompile OpenSim on a server in my barn uh, every, uh, uh, every week before the meeting so I know what, the, what uh, uh, changes have been made in OpenSim lately, and then I can test on that recent version. Of course, if you don't have a spare server or the skill to uh, install OpenSim, and it turns out it's fairly easy to compile an uh, OpenSim and install it, one way to make it easier is to, uh, uh, is to install a region on OS Grid where uh, Dan Banner uh, does most of the heavy work of getting the 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 the, the asset server and the the login servers and the, the 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 central part of of OS Grid to work, and all you have to do is add a region uh, one at a time uh, uh, on on your computer in your on your PC or on the server in your barn, and that way you can test with a, a recent version. Um, and another thing you can do, and this is really advanced, is is to learn to program in C sharp. And try fixing bugs in OpenSim yourself. So instead of just saying uh, it's broken, fix it. Instead, uh, instead of saying uh, uh, it's broken and here's how to make it break and here's a script that makes it break, uh, the the next more uh, more powerful thing to do is to say it's broken and here is a patch that will fix it. But I have some bad news for you that uh, that uh, the developers are are very protective. Of OpenSim, and they will not accept your uh, your patches easily. And sometimes they will. Uh, I have never had a patch accepted. Although a couple of times when I have submitted a patch saying here's a way to to test to see if if it's okay to call a function before you call it, and they rejected my patch. But then Ubit found a way to uh, to test these things. That was better than what what I uh, imagined, and so uh, so submitting a patch at least uh, got uh, uh, Ubit thinking about how to test for how whether or not you can call a function, and that that ended up working out really well in the end. Now I have a, a, a sort of a sad, sorry story to tell, and that is that that reporting bugs to OpenSim is kind of a leap of faith. That uh, it's an investment in the far distant future. 
After a bug is reported, it may take a while to fix it. After it is fixed, it's sometimes years before a new version of OpenSim is released. And then it's years before many people update their regions. Like I said, uh, OS Grid is is full of regions with old versions of OpenSim still running on it. And then sometimes it's years before commercial grids uh, update to a new release. Kitely, for example, has fortunately updated to, to 0 0.9, and I'm uh, real happy to see that. And unfortunately, I'm a merchant in the Kitely marketplace, and that means that uh, if I find a bug tomorrow and I submit it to, to the uh, developers and they fix it, it's going to be a while before it will it will it will percolate into all the systems out there. It might be years before I could sell a product that uses uh, a function that I, I had to report a bug in, and um, and that's. Uh, uh, so that that seems like uh, a, uh, a, a thing that, that might discourage you from submitting bugs. But patience and faith has eventually paid off for me. And it has, uh, uh, I've, I have been around long enough that I've been able to, to sell that paint in the sky uh, primitive uh, tool. And, uh, and things uh, continue to get better. And I hope that things will continue to get better and get better faster in the future because more of you will be reporting bugs. Okay. All right. We need to uh, wrap it up. Yep. That was the end. Links. Okay. I can see the links you've got while everyone looks at the links. Thank you, Kayaker, for a terrific presentation.